Well, someone should be able to say amen to that. He took your sins away. That's your testimony, right? Thank you for that song. I guess we got one whose sins are forgiven. All right, if you could uh, grab your Bibles, turn to Genesis chapter 39, and while you're doing that, I'm going to read a few statistics, and these statistics have to do with how to be safe. We all enjoy being safe, right? Well, here we go. The number one way to be safe is to avoid riding in automobiles because they are responsible for 20% of all fatalities. Now, I do need to say uh, these statistics were taken back in 2003, so it's probably a little higher on some of these, but we'll go with these for now. Number two, do not stay home because 17% of all accidents occur in the home. It's kind of scary, especially when you have five kids, six kids for some. Number three, avoid walking on streets or sidewalks because 14% of all accidents occur to pedestrians. Number four, avoid traveling by air, rail, or water because 16% of all accidents involve these forms of transportation. Well, I have good news for you. This next one is you will be pleased to learn that only 0.001% of all accidents or or all deaths occur in a worship service in church. That's pretty good. And these deaths are usually related to previous physical disorders. Therefore, logic tells us that the safest place to be tonight is right where you're at. So sorry, John. My preaching's not going to kill you. It may bore you a little bit, but you're going to live. You're going to live through it. So safest place to be is in church. All right. Genesis chapter 39. I'll let you remain standing because I'm going to read, or remain seating, seated. I'm just going to start reading. Genesis 39. Now Joseph had been brought down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, had bought him from the Ishmaelites who had bought him down, brought him down there. The Lord was with Joseph and he became a successful man. And he was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hands. So Joseph found favor in his sight and attended him. And he made him overseer of his house and put him in charge of all that he had. From the time that he made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in house and field. So he left all that he had in Joseph's charge, and because of him, he had no concern about anything but the food he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance, and after a time, his master's wife cast eyes, her eyes on Joseph and said, lie with me. But Joseph, on Joseph and said, lie with me. But Joseph, he refused and said to his master's wife, behold, because of me, my master has no concern about anything in the house. And he has put everything that he has in my charge. He is not not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept back anything from me except you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And as she spoke to Joseph day after day, he would not listen to her, to lie beside her or to be with her. But one day, when he went into the house to do his work, and none of the men of the house was there in the house, She caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and got out of the house. And as soon as she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and had fled out of the house, she called to the men of their household and said to them, See, he has brought among us a Hebrew to laugh at us. He came to me to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice. And as soon as he heard that that I lifted up my voice and cried out, he left his garment beside me and fled and got out of the house. Then she laid up his garment by her until her master came home. His master came home. And she told him the same story, saying, The Hebrew servant, whom you have brought among us, came into me to laugh at me. But as soon as I lifted up my voice and cried, he left his garment beside me and fled out of the house. As soon as his master heard the words that his wife spoke to him, This is the way your servant treated me. His anger was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison the place where the king's prisoners were confined, and he was there in prison. 
We've read a lot of words. So that's a longer scripture passage than you would typically hear. But tonight I just want to talk about one simple word. It's a, it's a word that we use all the time. And I, and I will say this before we start. This message may be uh, directed more towards our teenagers, or excuse me, our young adults. But hopefully you older ones can find something of value as well. But it's a simple word. It's not a bad word. In fact, we use this word almost in every sentence or in every conversation. It's mostly used as a negative word, but it isn't necessarily a negative word. In fact, I think it could be a positive word. It's especially a word as parents that we try extremely hard to get our children to not say. I think you might know exactly where I'm going. It's the word no. Now, before you young people, I, I'm going to try really hard to, to get you guys to be comfortable with saying that word tonight. But before you get too excited and you get to go home and tell your parents, no, let's stick to the context of what we're trying to talk about tonight. We just read about Joseph. And in this passage, we read that Joseph was put in an extremely difficult position in a situation. It was a place where his true character was going to be put to test. We read what happened. We read that Joseph was able to say no. And there wasn't a doubt in his mind when he said no. When he said, he, when he said no either. We've all been there. Perhaps you've said to yourself, you know what, I'm not, I'm not going to do that again. I'm not going to do it again. I'm sick and tired of the way I feel afterwards. I'm not going to go back to that website. I'm not going to listen to that music. I'm not going to watch that movie. We've all said it. We've all said no. But when the situation arises again, we find ourselves falling again and again and doing the same things again and again. Why? It's my question. Why, why do I say no, but I don't really mean it? Or why can't I say no when I really should say it? Joseph truthfully learned what it meant to say no. He was faced with a difficult situation, yet he was still able to say no. We all have liabilities in our life. Can we all agree on that? We all have liabilities. Some of them are good. They're not all bad. Liabilities are not all bad. In fact, we just read about Joseph. Verse 6 of chapter 39, it said that he was handsome in form. He was good looking. His appearance was good. Now, there's a few that are here tonight that could probably say the same. Good looking. Especially some of our young strapping boys. Good looking. And the girls come to church all dressed up and pretty. I'm talking about my wife and my daughters, so calm down, you can calm down. And by the way, when it comes to my daughters, you young fellas, they're not available until the ripe age of 36. Then you can come and talk to me. But back to our point here. Our good traits, the good things in our life, the characteristics in our life can still be con considered a liability. Some of us like reading. Uh, but if our reading consumes us and we cannot control how much time is spent there when we should be spending our time somewhere else it could be a liability. Something as good as reading. Uh, watching a good wholesome movie on a Friday night with your family or playing games. If games is, and movies is something that we can't control the time that we spend, it can be a liability. I don't think we would be reading this passage if Joseph was not that good looking of a man. We may, be, we may but I doubt it. If he was, now I'm not saying that uh, being ugly is better than being good looking. Don't get me wrong. But when it comes to our temptations and when it comes to our liabilities, we all need to know what they are. It's important that we do. And the devil knows the things that are in our life. He knows the good things. He knows the positive things, the things that can be used for good. And he wants to take them and twist them and use them to just mess, mess us up. So we're talking about some of the difficulties that Joseph faced. And one of, one of them was the liabilities. We can also look at some of the difficulties that Joseph faced was his society that he was living in. Joseph lived in Egypt at the time. And if we go back a couple chapters in Genesis, we can read about a man who came to Egypt with his wife. And he looked at her and he said, if someone asks you who I am, don't tell them I'm your husband. Tell them I'm your brother. Why? Because he was afraid for his life. He didn't want to be killed. She was a good-looking woman. They wanted her. They're just going to go kill him, take her. She's available. There you go. 
That's, that's where Joseph was living in, this society. It was wicked society. Joseph didn't even need to worry about that in this case, though. Potiphar was gone. Potiphar wasn't there. Joseph probably, most likely, wouldn't have even been caught. He was dealing with Potiphar's wife, who had tons of resources at her disposal. And I'm sure that she would have been able to arrange to keep it a secret, and Joseph as well. The society that Joseph was living in made it even that much more difficult for him to say no. How about our society? What are some of the things in our own society that make it difficult for us to say no? We live in a technological day and age. And that drives me crazy sometimes. You know how you're talking this morning about reading books of the 19th century. I love the 19th century, especially when it's talking about the... The, old, the, the men and the women going from the east to the west and just I love that time of history but we live in a technological day we have Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and instant messenger and snapchat I used to have a snapchat Jody had his snapchat and we used to think we were cool sending snaps to each other kind of sounds weird right now we never had a snap streak like some of the young kids do. And they, I'm telling you what, if you, t- if you talk about them breaking their snap streak, it can, you can, that's some fighting ground right there. They want to keep their snack st- snap streak alive. I don't even really know what that means. But anyways, they do. But the scary thing to me is that a Snapchat message would disappear when it's done. That's, that terrified me. And once Jody and I started realizing that stuff, you know what? We said goodbye to Snapchat. I didn't want that in my house because now I'm a father. My kids are growing up. They're a long way. They'll be 36 before they get a phone too, so we should be okay. But they're a long ways away from having technology. But if I have something that I won't want them to have, in my personal opinion, I just shouldn't have it. You know, you can take that how you want. Take it or leave it. That's just my own opinion. But our society can make things very difficult for us when it comes to saying no. If you don't get anything else from this tonight, I want you to try and remember this. That difficulty in life is no excuse before God to say yes when you should be saying no. Difficulty in life is no excuse before God to say yes when you should be saying no. So we've talked about some of the liabilities of Joseph and the society that he was living in. How about the insistence of Potiphar, Potiphar's wife? said day after day she came to Joseph trying to get him to lie with her and commit this sin. And as she spoke to Joseph day after day, he would not listen to her. Sometimes it gets extremely difficult to say no, especially when you're being pestered and hounded by some of your good friends to do certain things that you know you shouldn't do. I guess an easy fix would just be to find some new friends, but sometimes that's not very easy to do. But it might be the right thing to do. But as Joseph was dealing with his liability and the society of which he lived in, the insistency of Potiphar's wife, there's another thing, that, another difficulty that Joseph had to overcome, and that was the opportunity. There was nobody around. It was just him, and it was just her. With all that was going on in Joseph's life, the day after day pestering from her to do this horrid sin he still said no because remember difficulty is no excuse in the eyes of God to say yes when you should say no Joseph said no we can say no we need to we need to realize that Joseph saying no wasn't just a reaction it was a decision it was a choice he made and every decision or every choice that we make has a basis on which we make that choice and that decision right So we'll talk about some of those. Joseph's was that his master trusted him. Joseph's master, Potiphar, he confided in him. He left everything to Joseph to watch over and to take care of while he was gone. Why? Well, Potiphar saw that he had a good thing going with Joseph because everything Joseph touched, the Lord blessed. So he had confidence in him. And Joseph didn't want to ruin that. The only thing I found this kind of funny. The only thing that he had to worry about Potiphar was the food he ate, the bread upon his table, whether he had whole wheat or white and nowadays gluten-free. But I don't think they had to worry about that back then. That's all he had to worry about was the food that he ate. 
it's pretty crazy. It's pretty awesome. Joseph was a pretty incredible person. But Joseph knew that his reputation was on the line. Can you remember a time when in your life you said no based upon your reputation? You, you, for the things that you were known for? The Bible is very specific when it comes to talking about a good name, having a good reputation. It says that a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. If you can take all of the money in the world, and let's just say half of that, we just piled it all right in here into the sanctuary, and you took that along with someone with a good name and a good reputation, and you went to God and you said, God, what would be better for me to have all this riches so that I could do all these wonderful things or to have a good name? God would look at you and say, it's to have a good name. It's to have a good reputation. Your name is worth way more than riches. Verse 5 says that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The, the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in house and in field. You see, it wasn't Joseph's reputation that was only on the line. Joseph knew that along with his reputation, it was the reputation of God, of the Lord. He was blessed for a very specific reason, and that's because he, he honored the Lord in all of the choices that he made. So his reputation was linked with God's reputation. And he didn't want to ruin that. He didn't want to throw that away. Because both of their reputations were linked. The basis of Joseph saying no was his reputation. His and the Lord's. And so because of that, he was able to say no. No. Reputation. Have you ever thought about what you were doing and how it may affect what people may think when they find out that you're Christians? It's a pretty powerful thought. Your reputation. Now let's look at Verse 9 in Genesis 39, it says, He is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept back anything from me except you. Because you are his wife. Joseph told Potiphar's wife no because she was not Joseph's wife. She didn't belong to him. Joseph allowed the Lord to be sovereign in his life. And Joseph learned from his father who was taught by his father and his father's father. And you can go all the way back to the line to Adam, where God specifically said to Adam that when it comes to marriage, therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Because of what God had taught Joseph, had revealed to Joseph, he knew that he had to say no. He knew it was wrong what this woman was asking of him. When you're filling your heart and your mind with God's word, well, let me go back. Why, why do you wonder sometimes that it's so hard when we're faced with some of the temptations and the struggles that we deal with to say no? Sometimes it can be a real battle, but right here, I think that if we poured our heart and our minds into this book and we tried our best to memorize this book and to write it on the tables of our heart, when those temptations come our way and we're faced with difficult situations, a situation that even so drastic as the one Joseph was in, we have God's word to lean on and it would be so much easier to say no. The revelation of God's word in our own heart keeps us and gives us the strength and the ability to say no when we need to say no. When God's word is revealed unto us and we engrave it into our mind, saying no to sin becomes much easier because it's not our own strength that we're relying on, our own self-discipline, our own will, but it's the strength that God can give us to say no in those circumstances. God said it. I believe it. That settles it for me. I think that's an old song we used to sing. The third part of the reason why Joseph could say no, we've talked about the reputation that he had with God, the linked reputation. We talked about God revealing to him what was right, what was wrong. Now we come to the relationship that Joseph had. Joseph said, how then can I do this and sin against God? Joseph his master Potiphar, he didn't want to sin against his, his master Potiphar, but even far greater than that, he did not want to turn his back on God because of the relationship that he had built with God. Everything Joseph touched turned into gold, so to speak. He didn't want to throw that away. 
It was more than losing his position. It was more than losing his upstanding relationship with Potiphar and what he was able to do. It was because of his relationship with his God. I've been guilty of this before. I'm sure you probably have as well. The fact that we don't do certain things because of it may embarrass our parents. It may embarrass our friends. It may embarrass our children. It's got to be more than that. It's got to be more than that. It's got to be because of our relationship with God and what we have been taught through God's word and what he's revealed to us through God's word that keep us from saying yes and help us to say no. I'm not saying no, so I won't have to deal with all these consequences. We've moved past that. I'm saying no because of my relationship with God and my, my desire to please him. So what, make, what helped Joseph say no? We talked about his reputation. We've talked about what God reveals to us through his word. And we talked about the relationship that we're experiencing with God. Almost done. But let's talk about some defenses that we need to help us to say no. For the most part, when Joseph was telling Potiphar's wife no, day after day after day after day, there were people in the house, right? They were in there, they were working, they were doing their jobs. But it was one specific day when Joseph came to the house, when all the men were out working, that Potiphar got a hold of him. She came up to him, she grabbed him, she got aggressive. And what did Joseph do? We all know what he did. He turned, he ran, and even left his garment there as she was holding on to it. What this tells me right off the bat is Potiphar's wife didn't approach David until he was alone. So there's safety in numbers. You young people, when you go out and have fun, stay in a group. Don't isolate yourself. Younger couples, double date. Go to a public place where there's going to be more than just you two. It's, there's safety in numbers. Safety in a group. Also surround yourselves with people who are going to help you say no. If you are constantly spending time with people who are not helping you reach your goals, our dating couples, if you're with someone who is not helping you meet your moral goals or the standards that you have, I have a very simple message for you. Dump them. Get rid of them. It's not worth losing your soul because of it. You want to be with someone and you want to be with friends who are going to help you and encourage you to say no. There's safety in that. Friends who are going to support you in your walk with Christ. And on the other hand, I'm so thankful for this church. I'm so thankful for the leadership of this church. This is a church that's rich with people who are interested in helping you maintain your morals. They play a vital part in that. They're people who love Christ and they love others. We just had a service last night out in the community. It's a, it's a, a direct reflection of what this church and the ministry that it's done. They love others, and they want others to see Christ. There's, that, that's a group that I want to be a part of and stay a part of. So, so n- number one, there's strength in numbers. You find a strong peer group. Number two, when you say no, be firm and resolved. Have you ever been eating? Uh, this one is so relevant to me. Have you ever been eating, and you're so full that if you take another bite of food, you just feel like you're going to just, you're going to lose it all. This happens especially when I'm at someone's house and we're coming down to the end and I don't even save room for dessert because that's for weird people. You eat the good stuff. Anyways, I'm just like so done and the hostess says, you know what, there's just one piece of meatloaf left and you're kind of half-heartedly saying, no, 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 before you know it's on your plate and you're stuffing it in because you don't want them to feel bad. That's a half-hearted no. Be firm, be resolved when you say no Stick to your gun. Stick to what truth you've learned in your life. When sin is offered to you, you can be firm and show them that you are not interested. If you keep walking by the edge that doesn't have guardrails, sooner or later you may find yourself tumbling over the edge. And it's not worth it. Don't lie to yourself and say, I will have, or I'll go to their house. I'll participate with them in that group. But when they go to watch a movie, I'll just, I'll just leave. Or I won't join that, that group chat. Don't even, don't even, you mess with fire, you get burned. The scripture tells us that as well. Just say no, no, no. And just don't go. So the way to say no is to surround yourself with people who are going to help you say yes. The way to say no 
is to not even get close to saying yes. You keep your distance. You don't even come close to taking part in something that may cause you to give in. The third thing is simple. Joseph was grabbed by her. And what did he do? He ran. He got out of there. It was radical. There may, came, there, there may come a time in your life where there has to be a change. There just has to be a change. Perhaps it'll be a job. Especially younger teenagers, you get your first job or your second job and you're thrown into the wolves, so to speak. And you're just surrounded by a negative peer group. That's causing you to do things that you thought you would never do. It might cause, it might, might, you, what needs to happen is you might need to find a new job. Or maybe running for you looks like this, where you go into your parents' room and you say, Dad, Mom, you know what? I'm struggling right now, and I need your help right now. Will you take my phone? Will you take my tablet? Will you take my laptop? Whatever it is you need to take. Will you take my book? It, whatever it is, will you take that from me and help me to, to learn how to control this? And if your parents have any sense in their heads, which I know they do because I know you guys, they're going to support you and they're going to help you to make that radical change, to say no. Remember at the beginning I said saying no is not a negative thing, it's a positive thing. When you say no to sin, you're saying yes to God. No means yes. See that positive. For those who are dieting, you understand exactly what this means as well. You see that dessert come before your eyes. You see that donut come before your eyes. For some, it could be chocolate milk that comes before you. And you know you're not supposed to have it. When you say no to that, you're saying yes to good health. You're saying yes to losing pounds. That's just so cool. Oh, that's awesome. When you say no to the, when you say no to sin, you're saying yes to God. The people wanted to make, Jesus had to say no as well. The people wanted to make him king. And Jesus told them, no, we're going to go to the next city. They wanted to make him their earthly king. And when Jesus told them no to that, he was saying yes to the cross. And it's because of that and his sacrifice and him saying no to that, that we are here tonight and we can worship him. It's not a drudgery to, find, to, to say no. Find the positive in saying no. No means yes. It's a declaration to your friends. It's, a, it's a, even a declaration to your enemies that you're going to say no to sin and you are going to serve the Lord. Yes to something positive. Yes to something biblical. biblical. Yes to something spiritual. May God help us to be like Joseph. When sin comes in front of us, may we not doubt what we're going to say, but know without a shadow of doubt because of the reputation and we're linked with God because of the revelation that God has revealed to us through his word and because of the relationship that we've built with him that we're going to say no and we're going to serve him. Let's stand together tonight. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we've had tonight. We thank you for your presence in our lives. We're thankful that as a day by day and it goes by in our life and as we fill ourselves with more and more of you, the desire that we have to serve you grows stronger and stronger. So Lord, we pray that you would help us. Help us to dedicate ourselves to you daily, to pick up our cross and to follow you. Be with us as we go to our separate homes tonight to serve you with all of our heart and soul and strength. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Dismissed.